I, I just think of the world in which we live as an exceedingly confused and obscure world. Um, I don't uh, dream of being able to clarify that situation. Anything I say is addressed, in a sense, to the outside world as um, the enemy, if you like. And um, if comments about it appear obscure, it is as nothing compared to the obscurity of the scene or the situation one is trying to elucidate. A medium creates an environment for itself that is completely imperceptible. Just as people have observed, we don't know who discovered water, but we know it wasn't a fish. Anybody who lives totally immersed in any situation is completely oblivious of it. He's a many-sided person. We have a great deal of fun together, laughing over silly things. Uh, I do his typing and much of his editing. When we were first married, I did, I edited practically every word he wrote because I didn't agree with it being from the South, but I quickly learned not to do that. I edit only the dangling participles and the, the uh, obscure uh, modifiers. Pre-literate societies do not tend to use words as representing things. The word tree doesn't mean tree. It is tree. And the natives simply say, if the word tree were not tree, how would I know tree when I say tree? He values his home life a great deal. He's like a homing pigeon. The minute he goes away, the only thing he thinks about is coming back to the couch and a great big roaring fire. I, w I have been asked what is a McLuhanism by uh, people from time to time. And once I remembered a, an item that uh, came to my rescue, there's a sign hanging on a Toronto junkyard which reads, help beautify junkyards. Throw something lovely away today. And uh, this kind of bizarre uh, would be cynical and uh, paradoxical sort of remark has, I think, some of the characteristics of a McLuhanism, which consists perhaps simply in tying uh, in uh, unexpected uh, circuit uh, things that uh, don't ordinarily get off a simple, a single line or a single plane. It's a, it's a form of circuitry. It would be terribly difficult for me to define McLuhanism because, uh, to me, uh, there, there isn't any gap between the man and his ideas. It's all one. My first teaching job was at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. And when I got up to face freshman classes there, I realized I was in a, a strange country and that I had to learn a good deal about it from the very ground up. I began to study their popular culture as a way of setting up a more natural dialogue with my students. That is, I began to study the sports, the humor, the comics. And it was literally while studying the New Yorker and time that I hit upon the discovery that if you don't understand these everyday things that are absolutely basic part of our lives, it's rather futile to um, be teaching Wordsworth and Matthew Arnold and even Dr. Johnson that if you can't even grasp the nature of your own world, why spend your time studying somebody else's world? For many years, uh, he worked against at least everything and everybody was against, were against his ideas. And uh, he was just all bottled up. And now he flows more freely and of course is happier. The Trump situations, I try them on. And I expect other people to try them on just to see what happens when they start probing them. The idea of accepting them or rejecting them as true or false is far from my thoughts. I don't agree with them or disagree with them myself. I merely try them on. I, I'm more of a sounding board, I suppose. He bounces the ball back and forth, and, and sometimes it's a blank wall, and sometimes there's a lot of give and take. Um, we managed to develop some quite funny things from some of the ideas. The um, 
The phrase I use is that when a new environment goes around an old one, the old one becomes an art form. And whenever you see a new art form popping up, like Model T's or old coach lamps, you know that a new environment has gone around them. And uh, so the new environment that has created much of our uh, strange new kinds of attitudes toward old environments is the new information environment that we have put outside, outside ourselves by electric means. And uh, this includes the planet in this way that if you uh, are putting a man into a, a space capsule, he has to take the planet with him. I think a great deal of the uh, misery and confusion of our time is related to the fact people still are trying to find goals in a world that is moving so fast that no possible goal could remain in focus for uh, 10 seconds. He would walk my feet off. He loves taking walks. Uh, usually at the most inconvenient times of the night or the afternoon or when I'm putting a roast in the oven or when I, particularly when I'm sewing evening dresses or dinner dresses and the attention is taken off him. <laughs> Corbusier, after careful studies, discovered that the right place to put any form of sculpture was where you would stand, whether indoors or out of doors, to be heard, insisting that sculpture is essentially an auditory, resonating form that fills and makes its own space. The Archer statue by Henry Moore is not representational, it's participational. Many people are offended by this kind of thing because they can't classify it. They can't uh, fit it into any little niche or category. And the, this is one of its principal characteristics. It, it compels the viewer to make his own sculpture as he looks at it. It forces the spectator to become co-maker with the sculpture. You have to get into the act of making, not of classifying. <sighs> Ravel, the architect of this building, had the inspiration of shaping it as if it were the yolk and white of an egg, merging. It's a nice theme for the electric age because Humpty Dumpty has gone back together again with a kind of a rush. And here we are inside the egg. Uh, but uh, you see, all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again because they were bureaucrats. They weren't turned on. They didn't have the electric circuits at their disposable, uh, disposal uh, to uh, speed up this uh, process of unification. But with electric circuits, Humpty Dumpty goes back together again with a rush. You couldn't do something like this <coughs> quite so easily in New York or Chicago because there are far too many advanced people there who would resist it. But in a more backward and conservative territory, the difference between the most advanced and the most conventional doesn't really appear. One of the advantages of being very backward is, of course, that you become an object of world attention and world solicitude. Remember the mouse that roared theme? If we could only l lose this battle, uh, we've got it made. They will shower us with aid. French Canada is undergoing a tremendous wave of this awareness. Separatism is not something that's going to happen. It has happened. And it has happened because of something we have done to ourselves. We have set up total electric circuits and information systems in all parts of Canada. The Fran this changes the image that the French and English have of themselves in relation to the whole country. People in any environment are much less privileged with regard to observing themselves than those slightly outside. One of the great advantages of Europe, for example, has been the fact that each small country can act as a counter-environment to the other countries, enabling them to become intensively aware of themselves. But as a counter-environment, uh, Canada has the opportunity to achieve a kind of artistic awareness of the United States, and typically Canadians have shown considerable aptitude in making ironic and comic and humorous observations about the United States. 
the fact that we are a counter environment rather than an environment uh, is well reflected in the fact that they don't spend any time writing about us. He's more interested in the university work than he is in uh, any of this consulting or any of the uh, the larger aspects of his work right now. And he's more interested in writing books. He'd much rather write books than travel around the country and lecture. Personally, I hate travel. I find it a kind of suspended animation that uh, is very exhausting and disturbing because uh, one is constantly adjusting to new spaces, new faces. And uh, this is, a, I find, a great drain on nervous energy. But um, travel has many forms, and this kind of horizontal travel on rolling stock is uh, much more con uh, conducive to uh, social life and uh, reading and chat. Whereas when you go up in an airplane, the, uh, you're suspended in a, a kind of a time zone. You're really out of space, and uh, you begin to work away at forming a destination image or syndrome that uh, imprisons you in a kind of hope uh, bubble or pattern. Contrary to what he generally says, I think he enjoys it a great deal once he gets there. He's with groups of people, for the most part, who uh, can follow him and are appreciative of his ideas, many of them disciples. Telescope 67 returns to Marshall McLuhan, a provocative Canadian who will soon be taking his message to the $100,000 a year Albert Schweitzer Chair in Humanities at Fordham University right after this message. Television is a serious medium. It's an inner-oriented medium. You are the vanishing point. It goes inside you. You go on an inner trip. It is the prelude, the vestibule to LSD. It's rather grim. Uh, the Ben Casey world, the Peyton Place world, uh, these are altogether gruesome and uh, banalities uh, dominate the scene because TV is an inward and depth medium in which all sorts of meditation goes on in everybody's bosom. If you're surrounded with banality of programming, then why not devote your powers uh, to discerning patterns and exciting matters in the banalities, doing a sort of uh, corporate psychiatric job on them, instead of merely uh, selecting and sorting and discarding and ignoring uh, nearly everything around you. We're not really as far away from the world of Henry Moore as you might imagine, because the world of the comic book is a world of contours and outlines. The Batman cult may well be related to the fact that most of the television producers of our time were having their adolescent comic book phase when Batman was a new form. But uh, any new technology, such as color television, will produce a nostalgia for other art forms, earlier art forms, quite unexpectedly. Uh, TV produced the cult for the old silence, but uh, the color TV has produced quite a number of nostalgic revivals, including the comic book as a collector's form, and the attics and uh, summer cottages and basements of North America probably contain fortunes unknown to the occupants in old comic books. If uh, a te the teaching establishment wished to uh, handle at a single stroke the whole environment of trash and vulgarity they complain about. They have only to program it for weekly examination once or twice. The young would never look at these things again. They now accord this treatment to Shakespeare and uh, make Shakespeare unreadable and impossible for life by simple expedient of examinations. But if they did the same for comic books, and uh, the daily comics and the comic books and the magazines, the TV shows, the radio shows, they could control the young uh, interest or de deprive the young of all interest in trash and vulgarity forever. 
he, he's quite a little boy in a lot of ways. The whimsy and the things that amuse him. Most good jokes are quite definitely uh, means of expressing grievances, which may be uh, why uh, small ethnic minorities are the most uh, prolific source of stories, or at least subject of stories. It's often puzzled me and amused me that people can manage to be agitated about the population explosion and at the same time about the bomb. I have often argued uh, the paradox that it is the coverage of wars that intensify the warfare condition because once you put information around the events at any battlefront, it steps up the activity of that battlefront enormously by creating great audience participation. Without total national participation in these events, there would be very much less energy and activity at the front. In fact, if you withdrew all coverage, whatever, from all media, from all warfare, it would be very difficult to mount any form of war. And he's terribly sophisticated and obscure and above my head in a lot of ways. A lot of his thought processes I can't quite follow, but I, my duties have been a great many of them secretarial rather than uh, uh, reading and keeping up with his work. Um, what's he like? A, a very useful phrase comes to mind. A, a, a Gert Gawk. It's uh, some sort of English dialect phrase for a big jerk. The sort of jerk who gives, uh, a sort of guy who gives jerks a bad name. A Gert Gawk. I'm sure that when my daughter enters church to be married in a few days, this will be a tremendously sentimental occasion, simply because everything is set to isolate a few emotions in, and in high intensity. Fatherhood is a rather unusual idea. People seem to talk much more about motherhood. There's such a, a, a huge gap between the, uh, the events that go to the making up of fatherhood that uh, it uh, seems an unreal topic, doesn't it? Uh, the, uh, you know, it is. It's a very uh, uh, brief uh, sort of... Um, topic, isn't it, compared to motherhood, which extends outward for great periods. Um, no, fatherhood is a very uh, uh, abrupt, uh, aphoristic matter. It's um, just an aside. <laughs> I do understand only when he does explain it to us, not as he writes it. The only order that the young can create in a very fast-moving world of information overload, the only order they can create is that of myth. They don't think mythically. They still think in the old uh, patterns, 19th century patterns. But uh, they live mythically. They live surrounded by uh, mythic monsters like go-go girls. Aren't they going to turn that down? Well, waiting for go-go. The medium is the message. Grow growing up absurd. The go-go girls ordinarily have a cage while appearing to uh, manifest their energies untrammeled, unconstrained. Sound in this kind of world is not used as something to be listened to. It is a kind of foam rubber which you press against and it presses back against you and makes you feel kind of wanted. Sound in, in the new world of dance song is not for listening, it's for making. And so the go go girls, locked up in, each in her little world, represents a kind of theater of the absurd in which all communication has broken down. In fact, no attempt is really made to communicate. Each puts on his own show in his own little straight jacket. I have, by the way, a peculiar reading habit that I developed in recent years. I read only the right-hand page of serious books. 
if it's a frivolous, uh, relaxing book, I read every word. But serious books I read on the right-hand side only because I've discovered an enormous redundancy in any well-written book. And I find that by reading only the right-hand page, this keeps me very wide awake, filling in the other page out of my own noodle. His ideas aren't entirely unexpected. I don't follow them always, but they're not entirely unexpected. After, it's a curious thing, but after he has an insight, it seems so logical. I wonder if I didn't think of it. I never would have. But one thing follows another so logically that the conclusion seems so logical to me. At any rate, but I've been brainwashed. If I were to trust the observations of my critics, I would uh, despond uh, and uh, despair to the point of cutting my throat. However, I find a certain amount of pleasure uh, in uh, such activities as I engage in. And uh, it is mainly in the process of making discoveries that I find my satisfactions. I find no satisfactions whatever in reading about them, or I, I can't bear to reread anything I have ever written, or I couldn't bear to rehear anything I've ever said. That is, I might have to bear it, but it wouldn't be fun. Mm -hmm.